Hey there everybody, I'm Seashow and welcome back to episode 5 of our Let's Play Minecraft Feed the Beast Blood and Bones mod pack. So if you remember we left off in the last episode with getting a nice little amount of iron built up in our smeltery and we made just a little, or an iron pickaxe and took a little bit of an adventure, came back to base. And while I was off screen, I did just a little bit of mining. Managed to find a decent amount of iron and tin. Uh, we also got some silver and lead, which we will get into using before too long here, because I'm going to want to try to get into a little bit more advanced stuff soon, hopefully, to help things out a little bit, make things a little bit easier on us than having to use the smeltery and whatnot. But... For the first part, I figured we could make some Damascus steel. Uh, what we're doing right here is I'm melting down three copper and one tin, which makes bronze. And then the bronze will mix with the iron to make the Damascus steel. Alright, while we're waiting on that, I think, yep, I had just a little bit of charcoal brewing up. We we're running just a little bit low on that, and I had to, I had to go out and plant some of our rubber trees that we had found so that we would have a decent source of making torches because we really should have had those down already but we've got them now so no worries there we've got enough torches so hopefully what we're going to be able to do here is we're going to do a full upgrade to all of our tools and hopefully armor to Damascus steel let's just see how much this makes real quick once the copper finishes melting Alright, so we've got eight ingots there, so we know that that mixture will make eight ingots. So we can make at least one more set, and this will make another, let's see, I'll have to figure this out here. Looks like we could use some more copper, actually. Let's see, since the smeltery doubles everything, this will be eight right here, plus another one will be nine. So we do have enough for one more mixture, thankfully. Oh, we also have to think that the tin ore will double as well. I almost didn't think of that part. Unfortunately, we don't have a tin ingot, and I don't want to waste it by smelting it in the regular furnace. So we'll just go ahead and have an extra tin ingot in here. It shouldn't hurt anything, honestly. It'll we can get it out after we're done with everything. Oh, uh, for some reason, oh, I guess there just wasn't enough bronze in there to mix with the iron. Let me go check the ratio real quick on that. Uh, I'm not sure if I remember how much the 8 MB is. Well, that smelted up a nice little chunk more. This should be enough for everything, I think. If not, we can always go find just a little bit more copper. Copper is definitely one of the easier ones to find right now. And what we're wanting, really, is these Damascus tools so that we can mine just about anything in the overworld, I think. I'm not sure if there's any metals that it can't mine, but I know it should let us mine that Certus Quartz down there, which means we can dig our mine shaft out a little bit further and hopefully get to some diamonds. So we managed to make 32 Damascus steel. Unfortunately, our bronze is on bottom there, so let's get that out of there first. After that, we're going to go ahead and pour out a decent amount of the Damascus steel, enough for armor at least, and then we'll see what we have left over for tools. Because we definitely want to get some armor going. Now that our wooden armor is gone, uh, we could make iron armor, but why settle for iron when you can have a nice upgrade? So what the basin will do for you is if you were to pour stuff out into the basin, it will essentially make it into its block form which means that it will be nine ingots essentially so it's a lot faster than pouring it out individually as you can see here we can take that Damascus steel and just turn it into the nine ingots easy as pie while I was uh, down mining I mined in our little shaft off to one of the side shafts that I had made 
And I found an entire underground labyrinth. Um, it's pretty much something that the roguelike dungeons adds. They are pretty dangerous, so I did not explore very far into it. I just found a chest right about where I found the shafts at, so I went ahead and looted that chest, and we got just mostly junk, but we did get this amusing little item that you get out of the, uh, you can find this out of the roguelike dungeon chests. Uh, essentially, it's kind of like a joke item in a way. Uh, you could kill enemies with it, and it would have the actual looting and Bane of Arthropods effect, which means that it does more damage to spiders. Uh, and as for the thorns effect, if you go over to this tab here, you can actually equip it as a helmet, which would give you the thorns enchantment. So an amusing little item. Uh, it also works as regular cactus, so anything you can do with a regular cactus you could do with this. Not sure what we'll do with that uh, yet, maybe we'll just keep it as kind of a collector item. Alright, so we get a precise amount. Since it's 24 ingots for armor, I'm going to go ahead and pour this out in a more precise amount. Probably going to leave this iron in here, and we sh we might end up needing to make just a little bit more Damascus steel, I think. I'm not quite positive yet. We might be alright. We'll see. We'll also need these bronze ingots for some other stuff later anyway, so it won't hurt that we've got those right now. Alright, so this is going to leave us with 8 ingots inside. Yeah, I think this should be more than enough for tools. Alright, let's go ahead and make our armor first. I think I hear a zombie miner. And he is getting close fast. Oh, there he is. Well, that's not good that they found their way in here. And it is a very good thing I have that armor. Mm -hmm. on. No, it's not. Well, we made that just in time, it looks like. I'm not sure where he came from, but boy did he come up through here. My goodness, he really dug his way up here, didn't he? Alright, we're going to need to close that up. Now, the harder the material, the harder it will be for them to mine through it, so it is beneficial to make your base out of something very strong. Right now, we've got a hole in the wall, so we're not exactly safe from those guys, but as you saw, thanks to our new armor, he didn't really manage to do any damage to us at all. So as you can see with this nice new Damascus steel armor, we are pretty well set at this point. Although we are starting to run just a little bit low on food, which could be a problem. Alright, so I'm going to show you guys a little trick you can do with rotten flesh with Tinker's Construct installed. So I'm going to make just a few slabs here. And we're going to make some drying racks. Now, these right here are essentially used to dry out rotten flesh and make monster jerky. And using that, we will be able to make ourselves a little bit of food. Now, it takes, I believe it's about five or six minutes. I'm not really sure. Somewhere in that area. But it does take a decent amount of time, so we're going to go ahead and get that going now, so that hopefully we are good to go whenever we need it. Aside from that, we've got just a little bit of meat we can cook if necessary. And we might end up having to use that hay soon. And we have a fishing zombie outside. I'm not going to mess with them because they like to pull you out. 
All right, so next thing's next. We need our tools, Damascus tools. I thought for a moment he broke my door, even though I'm not technically on hard mode. That would have been the sound of him breaking one of our torches, of course. As they so love to do. I do look forward to getting a much better light source going before too long. One of the biggest reasons I'm wanting to get diamonds, and I'm not sure how he got there. But one of the biggest reasons, and he dropped a skull, now, or a zombie head, I should say. This is nice. It will essentially upgrade a tool. This one particularly only upgrades copper, though. Uh, let me see if I remember how these work. I think if you just apply them like this. Yeah, that's right. So this one's a max tier of copper, which means at best it can only boost this. Which would have been nice before because it would have let us mine to skip over the iron step. But unfortunately we did not find it until it was too late. So I suppose we will just not worry about that for now. Hmm. I suppose we can go ahead and apply it. If worse comes to worse, we'll have it in case of emergency. But we're going to go ahead and store it away now, because we are upgrading to Damascus Steel. We don't need that anymore. Uh, we're going to keep our Iron Pickaxe around so that we can use it for uh, uh, normal mining, and every time we're digging out stone or anything like that, we'll use it. But, aside from that, we are going to upgrade to Damascus now. Alright, let's take care of this banging real quick. Well, we don't have our sword yet. Sorry you having to listen to that. Alright, we're just going to need one of these, and then we need four tool rods. Now, we could make the tool rods out of, like, wood or something, but we have the resources, so why not make them out of steel? Full set tools are just a little bit better in general. Later on we'll go into more depth about how we're making our tools and how complex they are and what they're made out of. Like using obsidian for the binding for instance is really good because it gives it unbreaking three essentially. But like I said we're not going to worry about that for now. We're just going to make our basic tools pretty much. Alright, now we can get our pickaxe capable of mining Ardite, which means that it should be able to mine anything in the open world, I think, because Ardite is a nether ore. Alright, and these are all going to have Reinforce 2 on them, which is a huge boost for us. So we are doing pretty well as far as tools are concerned now, so that is good. And I'm going to take care of him now. Alright, he tried to pull me out, but no thanks, sir. Oh, and he dropped a potato. That will be great once we actually get our hoe and farm going. Alright then, let's see now. Uh, so to use this miniature red heart, essentially you have to combine it with some other stuff, but it will require us going into the nether first to get a necrotic bone. And it also takes diamond to make this jeweled apple here. The empty canister is a lot easier, it's just four aluminum ingots, it's very simple. But these two ingredients right here are just a little bit more difficult to come by, and we are not quite ready for the nether yet. I am thinking that we can get to that soon actually. Uh, I'm planning on getting some water and going well, we've actually got some lava underneath the base I found, but since it is so much closer and we may need it for our smeltery, I think I'm going to take the water and go over to the lava pool that was further away over there. You remember the one that we found first? 
It looks like we may need to look into using our Weaver food soon. I'll have to look into what the best use of that will be, because we don't have cocoa beans. So it's going to have to be made into something, likely bread, which is a little bit more complicated with these mods installed. You have to essentially turn it into, I think it's dough, or no, it's flour and then dough, and then you can cook it into bread, I believe it is. Or you can also use the dough for stuff like pies and whatnot. And I'm not sure how we missed any berries coming up this way. I think I hear more lava. I do. There's even more lava over here than I thought, actually, because our other lava pool is right over there, as you can see. I did not realize there was a lava pool there, and that was very close. Alright, just hop down here on our obsidian. Alright, making lots of steam here. And I think that's all of it. Okay. And there's some coal here, too. We don't have any torches here, so there's nothing dangerous about mining us right now. No worries. Except for maybe a little bit of suffocation damage. Alright, so I think this can mine obsidian, I believe. It might be... oh, it can. Okay. This is going to be a long process, uh, and after this first piece here, I'm just going to pause the recording, because there's no point in you guys having to sit here and watch me mine about 16 obsidian. Alright. Oh, and some copper. What a perfect coincidence, actually. Oh, just one piece? Oh, come on. There we go. Uh, just a little tip for you guys. Uh, most of the... Oh, this right here is a silverfish block. You can tell because it is not breaking as easily. And we're back. As you can see here, I went ahead and mined out about 20 obsidian. Uh, we only really need 14 for the nether portal, which is what we're really wanting to do here. But I went ahead and gathered just a little bit extra in case we needed it for tools or anything like that. So we're going to go ahead and make our flint and steel, which, as most of you should know, is what you use to light the nether portal. Um, really wanting a slightly less... I really don't want to waste my smoothies on my hunger bar. Let's just go ahead and cook a little bit of this food real quickly. This is one of the reasons this is much better than a typical furnace. You can pretty much cook a lot more stuff with a lot less fuel. For instance, well, not necessarily less fuel, if I was to use one coal, for instance, well, you could cook a lot more food for a lot less fuel. You would have to put at least eight in each of these to really maximize it, but you could essentially cook for a lot less fuel. Alright, we're almost done here, cooking up four things for just a couple wood planks, which is a great deal. Probably could have done the two, one or two sticks. I really didn't need to waste a plank, I don't think, but that works. Alright. So we've got these here, which will do nicely for filling us back up, I hope. Alright, and that leaves us with that. So now what we need to do is decide where we want our nether portal. Now we're going to want it somewhere out of the way, I think somewhere outside where I can close it up and have it separated completely from the base just in case something nasty gets out. I have not actually been to the nether in this mod pack, I'm familiar with some of the mods that I know are in it. Like I believe there are nether ores and a few other ones like the Natura mod makes some modifications to the nether. Uh, but overall, I know there are a lot of modifications to the nether. And I know some of what 
is going to be in there, but not everything. So I'd like to be safe than sorry. I think just digging it out right up here will do just fine. Personally, I always like to dig my nether portals down into the ground a little bit. I just like being able to just walk into it and not have to jump up to get in. Just the way I like to do it personally. Alright, so this is going to be our nether portal. There we go. Nice and creepy looking with this texture pack. I will be honest, I like this nether portal a lot more than I do the vanilla one. <laughs> Alright, we don't have to worry about anything coming through just yet, since we just made the portal. So let's go ahead and make our barrier around it so that nothing gets in and nothing gets out but us, hopefully. wasn't quite enough. Let's go down and grab another couple stacks of 16 cobble and we'll make ourselves a couple doors real quick too while we're down here. And I think we can all be thankful that no mobs are bothering us. We actually have a pretty decent place we're at right now because mobs can't actually spawn on the... Oh my goodness. There are a lot of you fellas. And I believe I lagged when I went to touch the portal. Try to get back inside real quick, shall we? Well, that was awfully close. Oh, and one of them is a minor zombie. Alright, let's just prepare ourselves for him coming in. Looks like we're going to have to fight our way back against these guys. Or I guess they're too stupid to come down the stairs, I'm not sure. Oh goodness, I hear another one. Only he sounds like he's just plowing through stone somewhere. Oh my goodness, these guys can just get in from anywhere, can't they? turned out to be just a little bit more eventful than I was hoping for actually. Alright. Nope. Oh, I'm glad that didn't light on fire. Broke my door too. They're not very nice are they? I didn't realize they could break doors that easily. Well, it looks like we could be moving sooner than expected because I may have to go and build somewhere where I can hopefully build out of a decent material to keep us safe here because this is definitely not working very well at this point. They're just digging through everything to get to me. The more intelligent AI that they have makes it very difficult to escape their watch. Alright, so... I don't want the recording to run too long here, so I think we'll start next episode with a trip to the nether. So I'm Seashow, and this has been episode 5 of Let's Play Blood and Bones. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>